Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome back to another video, or if you're watching this as it happens, welcome to the live stream. I know it's a little weird for those of you who are already live because technically this isn't brand new. It's kind of like you're on a TV show and we're starting a new segment. But in this video, we're gonna continue learning about cloud pen testing. Specifically, we're gonna dive into Azure pen testing. Now you probably know what Azure is, just kind of three kings in the cloud environment. You have AWS, Azure and GCP. And one incredible platform I recently discovered, you probably heard me talk about it, something called PwnLabs.io. Now I'm not just saying this, but hands down, they have the best and most affordable cloud labs I have come across. Many of the labs are completely free to do, but if you want access to all the labs, you can get a premium subscription, which is only $20 a month. Now, if you've looked at cloud training outside of this, you know that that's an incredible price. You do cloud training with other organizations, you're you're spending hundreds of dollars just for initial access. So this really is an incredible deal. And I love that they're passionate about making this open to everyone. But the lab that we are going to do today is completely free. So you can actually follow along with me as we do this and would encourage you to do so. I'm going to share my screen and show you where we are at. We are here at pwnedlabs.io. So if you wanna follow along, go to pwnedlabs.io and you can actually sign in with your Google account. You don't even have to make an account right away. Sign in with your Google account and you will have instant access at least to all of the free labs. I wanna look over the chat, make sure I'm not missing anything. Uh, Peter, so more of a question, said my current IT role has some blue team security tasks, but I also do systems analysts operation support and system admin work. Will my blue team work help at all as I try to get into pen testing? Yo, absolutely it will because first you already understand security. You're just working on defending it. And when you become a pen tester or are applying for pen testing roles, you know what the blue team is doing. You know how to evade some of those defenses and you know some common misconfigurations that the blue team makes that you might be able to exploit. So absolutely it helps. Gustavo said, I'm from Brazil, starting with hacking in my free hours. This content can help me in some way. Do you have some tips? Um, my tips would be get involved with the community. So I have a Discord community. You can find the links on my LinkedIn, but it's called the Work Smarter Community. We're at nearly 4,000 members and I offer workshops, I offer coaching there. And we also have a weekly meeting where you can share the goals and the things you're working on. And here's the coolest thing. Everything's free of charge. Nothing is behind a paywall. Uh, pretty soon me and a team of three other people are gonna be doing one-on-one -on -one coaching. And the only requirement for that is we ask you to donate to a nonprofit profit of your choice and whatever amount you're able to afford. And then we'll sit down for one-on-one -on -one coaching. It can help map things out for you. So if you're not part of a community like that, join one. All right, let's go ahead and dive into things. I am going to refresh LinkedIn because I always have to refresh it to see comments when I make sure I'm not missing anything, which I don't think I am. All right, so here is pwnlabs.io. You heard me talk about questions. Hopefully you have the opportunity to get signed in. We're going to go ahead and click dashboard here. And here we have access to all the different labs. We're gonna change our platform over to Azure. And we can look at all these different free labs. So let's do Azure Blob Container to initial access. The reason I want us to try this one is we talked in the last video or in the beginning of this live stream, we went through the cloud engineering roadmap released by Pwn Labs, and they explain that this is often one of the ways a threat actor gets initial access to your cloud environment is through a storage container, whether it's uh, an S3 bucket on AWS or a blob container on Azure. So let's see if we can figure this out together. So we just have to click the lab and click start poning. From here, we can turn the lab on. And there we go, we have our entry point and we have our scenario as well as a full walkthrough. But we're gonna see if we can do it without looking at the walkthrough first and if or when we get stuck, we will jump over at the walkthrough. I also wanna get my notes pulled up here on my Cali machine. We'll get Cherry Tree pulled up and I'm just gonna call this Azure Container Lab. That'll work for me. And let's go and grab some of this information. So we'll just grab our learning outcomes and our scenario. And I'm gonna copy that over and we'll drop it in our notes here. And I'm just gonna format it a little better. So here's our scenario. Mega Big Tech have adopted a hybrid cloud architecture and continues to use a local on-prem AD domain, which is super common, as well as the Azure Cloud. They are wary of being targeted due to their importance in the tech world and have asked our team 
They hack smarter security team to assess the security of their infrastructure, including cloud services. An interesting URL has been found in some public documentation, and we are tasked with assessing it. So our lab prerequisites is basic Windows command line knowledge. And here is some of our learning outcomes. We'll make this big and we'll just make these bullet points and we'll kind of use these learning outcomes as a roadmap as we work our way through this. So we're going to get some familiarity with the Azure CLI. We're going to do identification and enumeration of the Azure blob container. We're going to leverage blob previous version functionality to reveal secrets. And we're going to understand how this attack chain could have been prevented. And this is what I love about their labs. They have full walkthroughs, both for the attack path, but they also have a full walkthrough. And here's how you would defend this in the real world. So it gives you both attack and defense understanding of these different things. We need to go ahead and grab this url right here this is our starting point our website and you know what we'll actually even begin enumerating this from our cali machine itself i want to go ahead and get uh kato pulled up so we'll just call this kato and let's open up kato since it's a website we might have some web app pen testing if kato wants to open there we go thank you kato i appreciate it and let's go ahead and do a new project. And I'm just going to call my project Pwn Labs IO. Oh, maybe I should click the right button, eh? Pwn Labs .io. Okay, so we have that set up. We have intercept set up here. And we go open up Firefox. We'll just let everything forward for now until we see an interesting request. Go back over to Cherry Tree and let's see what we're looking at here. All right, we have the all-in-one social media management solution for business. Looks like the buttons don't work, more of just a static website. And one giveaway also is that we have this uh, web index. This tells us it's probably an Azure static website. Host it in a container, and based on the attack path, that might be what it is. You can see none of the buttons work. Any of these work? Nope. So when you're looking at an Azure website like this, one of the things to check is your source code. Is there anything interesting that might be in the source code? So let's go ahead and right click and view page source. Oh, how the heck do I turn on word wrap? Yeah, go wrap long lines. There we go. I don't like the red underlining that um, Firefox is doing to me right now. Maybe just for this purpose, let me open up Chrome here and let's look at the source code here. It might look a little prettier. Okay, and we'll turn on line wrap. All right, let's see if we see anything interesting here. We have some source stuff here. We have a static directory, static directory more static stuff. We could uh, download it and look at it, but I don't think it's gonna be super helpful for us. Just looking through here quick, see if anything stands out to me. So nothing is standing out to me right away, but we know based on uh, this right here, this is an Azure container and we can even read the docs for that. So let's go to like Azure static website container, maybe like that. And let's read, let's read the docs on it. So static website hosting in Azure storage, you can serve static content directly from a storage container named web. So there's our kind of giveaway. When we see this web thing, we know that we're dealing with a static website hosted in Azure. Static websites have some limitations, blah, 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 blah. Setting up a static website, so it shows how to set it up. But once again, this is being hosted in a container. Now, if it's not configured properly, containers can have anonymous read access, similar to an S3 bucket. On an S3 bucket, if it's not configured properly, you can read it. Same with a container, but there's a specific URL you go to, and I always forget what it is. Let's see if Cato knows what it is. What is the... Uh, URL parameters to 
access an Azure container um, as an anonymous user. I don't know if that, I might be better off just Googling it. <laughs> I don't know if my question is going to make sense of ChatGPT. Yeah, not SAS. Okay, I'm just gonna Google it if if uh No, that's not how it that's not how it works. Okay. And GPT is hallucinating, ignore him. Azure anonymous container access URL. Oh my goodness, why can I not find this? Guys, I even wrote a tool for this. I kid you not that that checks this. But I can't think of the, the URL. It's a URL, uh, just some parameters on the end of the container that provide uh, read access to it. If anyone knows it, drop it in the comments. But it's it's really simple. I should have this memorized, but I don't. You can also enumerate with the, the CLI. Is Kato a chat? So Kato is just like a web app pen testing tool, sort of like Burp Suite. Here it is. No, it's not. Ah! I can't believe I can't find this. Um, I'm trying to go off memory. Let's check like... How can I not freaking remember this? This is silly. How can I not find it either? I don't want to look at the walkthrough just for this because I know exactly how to do this and have done it multiple times. But I'm just blanking on it. Oh, here we go. Maybe this, this might be helpful. Dude, no, stop. Oh my goodness. How can I not find this? It's such a silly thing. And I don't, um, the walkthrough probably uses a CLI to do it, but this is a much easier way if you aren't dumb and forget the URL. Someone's watching this right now, like after the fact and yelling at their screen saying, this is how you do it. Let me look at, uh, so I made a tool for this, but it's not a public tool. I'm actually gonna look at my own code that I wrote, if I can find it on here.
come on, Tyler. The frick, where's where's your script at, dog? can't find it. This is silliness. Freaking A. <laughs> um, hmm. Public Azure container URL. Not that. Here it is. Oh my goodness. This is what I'm looking for, y'all. Watch it not even actually work, but this is how you can list everything in that if it allows anonymous access. We're going to save this to our notes, even if it doesn't work, because that's this is what I was looking for. Just took me a little bit of persistence there. <laughs> now, if we go back to this, let's actually go back to the web. Yes, that's what I was trying to do. So it's similar to an S3 bucket. Now we can list all the blobs that are in this container. The container is readable by anonymous users. So we can see things like index.html. We can see all the scripts that are in this bucket. So let's actually document this for our notes. This would definitely be a finding if we were doing a pen test. And I just need to remember how to do this. I have, oh, I need to turn on um, light shot real quick. On my work computer, where all my Azure notes are, I have this just as part of my notes, but I don't have those notes access to it while I'm here on stream. So there we go. We have that. And if we look at this, leverage blob version functionality to reveal secrets. So there's a tool called Azure Storage Explorer, I think is what it's called. And if we go... Is this where I had it at? If we copy this URL, we're gonna switch back over to our Windows machine here. And if I go to Azure, Azure Storage Explorer, let's see if there's anything. Here, oh, here's all just my, my lab stuff. Um, let me do here, connect to Azure Storage. And it says, what kind of Azure resource do we want to connect to? Well, we want to connect to a blob container or directory. And we want to do anonymous. My blob contain allows anonymous access. And we have to use this URL that I found before. At least I think so. We'll see if this fails or if it works. Next, connect. Okay. Looks like it worked right here. And so we have, uh, we can kind of enumerate different files, but right away, we're not seeing anything that would actually contain credentials. But if we go back to our notes here, one of the goals is leverage blob version functionality to reveal secrets. So when it comes to containers, actually, let's look at the documentation. I don't want to explain this wrong. Let's go and look at Azure blob versioning and read it about it a little bit. So we understand the actual attack that we are doing. So you can enable blob storage versioning to automatically maintain previous versions of an object. When blob versioning is enabled, you can access earlier versions of a blob to recover your data if it's modified it or deleted. Well, you can imagine if we have a misconfiguration here where the blob is world readable, 
we as the attacker might be able to restore previous versions of the blob that might contain sensitive data. For example, maybe when they were setting up the static website, they accidentally committed credentials, they removed the credentials, but they have versioning enabled, which might allow us to recover something sensitive. So if we go back over here, we'll back back out here, I think, is it here maybe? Yeah, so on our storage explorer here, we have active blobs default. We can use it active and soft deleted blobs, active blobs and blobs without current version, and all blobs and blobs without current version. So let's, we know versioning, so let's try this first one. And look at that, we have a scripts-transfer.zip, and I think we can just download this. And yeah, we'll download it to our downloads, that's fine. Oh, do I need to select an actual folder? Can I, will it unzip it when I open it? Let's see if it does. Oh, it does. So we have, we have two scripts here. I'll just do it in documents. I'm gonna do new folder. All right, two scripts. Let's open up PowerShell. CD to documents, um, Azure, dir. So let's type Entra and see what this is. So install the required modules not already installed. So it's installing the Azure module and something for possibly managing users at Azure. We're importing the modules and look at this. We have some clear, clear text credentials. We have a username of Marcus at megabigtech.com and we have a password of the Eagles12345 exclamation mark. And it's connecting to Azure AD, connecting to the graph API, passing the access token, creating a header with that information, and then it's retrieving all uh, user information via PowerShell. But this might be end game for us. Let's uh, pull open our notes here. And we'll just drop this in our notes. We have some credential information right here. And let's see if we can actually log into the Azure portal with this information. So we'll do Azure portal login. Right, I'm actually gonna do this over on Firefox. And let's see if we can log in with these credentials. If Marcus at megabigtech.com and we'll grab our password, the Eagles12345. So far, so good. And boom, we have access to the actual Azure environment from here. Uh, we have some containers we might be able to get access to, but I believe this is our end goal. And if we go over and look at our profile, view account, and you can see there we have our final flag for this scenario. I'm just gonna copy that and drop it in our notes. There it is, and let's go ahead, whoops. Let's go ahead and grab the flag, copy it, go back to our Windows machine. Boom. And we have successfully completed the lab, even though it took me like a good 10 minutes to uh, remember the command to just list all the files in a storage container. But let's look at the walkthrough. Let's see how they did it. So real world context, there have been numerous examples over the years of data breaches resulting from misconfigured public Azure blob storage, the Azure equivalent of an S3 bucket. While Azure offers robust security features, the responsibility to secure data in the cloud rests with the account holder. Remember, we talked about this when we were going through the cloud engineering uh, mapway or cloud security mapway. All right, so yep, we found the development version. We looked at the source code, which I did as well. 
It reveals a static website file, which remember we looked at the documentation for that. And we read a little bit about blob storage. And see, they did it a much more hacker way than me. But hey, both ways work, do they not? So they this is just a get request method head. So they're just confirming here that it is hosted in as an Azure static website being hosted in a container. And all, all these things we discovered. So this is how they explored the web container. So they did, they did it via the Azure CLI. Let's also do it via the Azure CLI. Like let's do it their attack path as well. It's always good to know how to do things multiple ways. So this is just showing the, the same files. Like you can see these files. So this is the same view I had by going to the URL, but I showed you guys the way I would do it that I think is a, a little bit easier, but it's good to know the CLI. So that's what they're doing there. Okay, so now they're just getting just the file names I see. So it makes sense. And we, we read all about blob storage version. We actually went to the Azure documentation ourselves and looked that over. So it looks like this command is checking uh, the versioning information, kind of like what we did before, include versions is the tag right there. So we did it just in Azure Storage Explorer using the GUI, but this would be the way you would use it using PowerShell. We'll see if it pops up for us as well. And there it is. Same file scripts transfer.zip. We can check the version IDs, I see. And you can download it. Got it. So we did that, but once again, using using Storage Explorer, a little bit easier to use, a little more of a GUI for us. And then it's reviewing the scripts. Oh, I didn't even I didn't even <laughs> I didn't even look at the other the other script. Um, once I got those credentials, I tried that right away. Oh, wow. It's an admin account. So this is like a domain admin account right here. So if, if we had access to the on-prem environment, we could pivot into their on-prem environment as a domain admin. And they're just running the script to essentially dump the user showing that the, the account's valid. We just logged into the Azure portal. And then they did the kind of who am I command after authenticating. And that's where they found the flag. So what I like about their labs is you can see there's multiple ways to approach this. I did it in almost completely different way than the official walkthrough, but we came to the same flag, the same target goal at the end. So defense to start with the entire blob container is accessible by anonymous users and world readable that that's a huge thing. So let's just see, I'm not sure if we have permission to modify that as our Marcus user, but let's see if we can. So if we go and we search for containers, oh, maybe that's not gonna work. How about storage? Nope. I'm just seeing this X contractors. How do I access? Maybe I don't have access to the actual static web app. Or I'm just dumb and not seeing the way to access it. Okay, so in all resources, I'm just seeing that. Oh, well. Usually you would see that as a resource, wouldn't you? Anyone who knows Azure better than me, tell me why 
I'm not seeing that myself. And maybe it is just my account doesn't have access to it. I bet that's probably what it is. We would need a higher privilege account to make these changes possibly. Maybe that's the contractor thing, which I think is for another lab. Oh, well, let's, let's continue to at least read through what the remediation would be. Let me grab our Windows machine. This meant that a previous version of a sensitive file was publicly discoverable and readable. To mitigate this, the previous version should be deleted. All right, well, there's this, right? We. Well, I guess it does. It needs to be world readable, right? I, I guess the container having world readable access isn't a vulnerability. It's a website, right? If, if people can't read the files, the website's not going to load. But this was the vulnerability. There was a sensitive file there that was deleted, but the version wasn't deleted. If using the Azure CLI, the following command can be used after setting the storage account context with set current storage account. All right, well, let's let's try that. Let's see if Marcus has these permissions. So I think it's connect AZ account going off memory. Hey, my memory serves me correct. Marcus at megabigtech.com. And let's go ahead and grab Marcus's credentials from our notes. The Eagle, copy that, jump back over to our notes and paste those in. All right, we are authenticated to the lab as Marcus. And so it's saying, use this command. So a, remove AC storage blob. We want to specify the web container. Here's the blob we want to remove, and here's the version ID we want to remove. Could not get the storage context. Please pass in storage container with context. Is it supposed to be context instead of container? Let's see. <laughs> container, bro, I told you. I wonder if it's a permission issue since the command also isn't working. We must need more permissions. It's just demonstrating in the lab how you would fix this. All right, finally, it's never recommended to hard code credentials and scripts. You know, that's huge on-prem or in the cloud. Credentials should be stored in a PAM or a privilege access management system. Password manager are using a service such as Azure Key Vault. Key Vault allows us to securely store and access keys, passwords, certificates, and other secrets. But there you go, ladies and gentlemen, we have completed on Pwn Labs the Azure Blob Container to Initial Access. And once again, the cool thing about it in my perspective is I did it a completely different way than the official walkthrough, but we still had the same goal. We landed at the same place, so there's multiple ways to approach these labs. So less CTF-y. For a CTF, which I don't like, there's always like one specific way to do it. If you don't do it that exact way, you fail, everything's a rabbit hole, and I wanna throw my keyboard when that happens. But very practical, very, very fun stuff here. Uh, we are going to dive into another lab, at least that's my plan, but this is the end of this video if you're watching this after the fact on YouTube. So thank you for hanging out. Hope you did the lab right alongside of me and you learned something in the process. And hey, if you want more Azure pen testing, just watch the next video.